don't know what to say about what's going on. We have a insulated Watergate. It's as if uh, the Obama administration has insulated itself as far as the hierarchical top, Obama and his close advisors, um, completely out of the loop of anything that goes on uh, in our country, especially the IRS. This should come bring things to light. Um, the IRS is not part of our government, and they're blaming Obama. I mean, it's like blaming, you know, your cable company because you don't like the programming. Face it, the IRS is a private corporation. It's an oligarchy set up by the British throne with the Rothschild influences. Uh, the Rothschilds, the Bank of England, uh, they own, the, they own uh, the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds own the Federal Reserve and the IRS. It's a scam. It's a crime syndicate. And this has been exposed by many people, Eustace Mullins, Norman Dodd, the tax-free, uh, tax-exempt uh, foundations. He went on record with that before he died. G. Edward Griffin, the dumbing down of the society, Charlotte Isabey, Dr. Stan Monteith, Larry McDonald says it best. It's undeniable. This is from 1983. Well, Tom, I'm sure being a long-standing member of the Rockefeller apparatus, uh, and as a member of the Council on Foreign Relations of long-standing, you're fully aware that you, there is an elitist core in this country that has seen value in subsidizing communism or protecting communism. It has? Sure. You're accusing me of subsidizing communism? No, no, I'm saying because that I happen to belong no. to a... No, there is an elite core. Now, that, no, no, wait a minute. There is an elite core in this country that has dominated American society. Well, I'm not one of well, them. The Trilateral Commission. The Trilateral Commission. Council on Foreign, Council on Foreign Relations. State Here's Department, I suppose. Well, let's face it. They've dominated the State Department for 40 years, mm -hmm. and uh, pretty much openly right, so. Right, but what are they trying to do? Well, their about? objective is to try to bring about a gradual transition in our society, a dissolving of sovereignty and a moving steadily to the left on the political spectrum. Well, who are the they? Belief, the elitist groups that I mentioned, particularly key individuals and policy makers in the Council is on the Foreign Relations. Is the International Monetary Fund part of this? Well, I would say the International Monetary Fund has certainly been set up for the purpose of facilitating that transfer of sovereignty and transfer of wealth on the road. Right, we elected Mr. Conservative. Let me just finish the point right. because otherwise we're going to have a lot of un unanswered questions. That you are looking at a group that has worked to bring about a dissolution of national sovereignties on the road to world government. And certainly uh, you're familiar with the local professor, Carol Quigley, who has been part of your club, in which he admitted all this. And he said in his book, Tragedy and Hope, the only thing I disagree is that we've worked to keep it a secret. And you see Arthur Schlesinger, Jr., writing way back in 1947, says, yes, this is the hidden policy of America. But we can't tell the American public because they're too unsophisticated to see the Who, value. What is the instrumentality of world government? What is the instrumentality of world which... government? That's the silliest statement I ever heard. He well, never made anything like well, that. Well, let me suggest that you read the May June issue of the Partisan Review of 1947, Tom, and you can read it for yourself. It's called well, that's the Schlesinger Manifesto. Schlesinger said there was a conspiracy, oh. a conspiracy oh, to promote communism. Oh, he didn't use communism. the word. Oh, no, he didn't use the word conspiracy. He said there was a conspiracy to promote communism. I think the objective earlier, Tom, was to promote communism. I think the objective earlier, Tom, was to promote communism. I think the objective earlier, Tom, was to promote communism. I think the objective earlier, Tom, was to promote communism. I think the objective earlier, Tom, was to promote communism. I think the objective earlier, Tom, was to promote communism. I think the objective earlier, Tom, was to promote communism. I think the objective earlier, Tom, was to promote communism. I think the he said that the objective, the secret policy, which we can't tell the American public because they're not sophisticated enough to see the value, is that through a steady result of the erosion of new deals, we bring the American society steadily to the left, right. and through a sound concept of benign containment, we merge into the vital center of the socialist left. Those are his words, not mine. So let's get back to the IRS. Commissioner knew more than a year ago about this IRS targeting conservatives, but it's not the IRS. It's the political agenda. It's moving in the new world order, this leftist agenda, you know, fooling the people to believing that they have to have all of these beautiful, wonderful things, and meanwhile taking away all the rights, and then, of course, causing things to make you scared so you react to that. That's the new world order. That's how it's working. So the ex-chief says uh, is... is uh, Un doesn't know how it happened. Nobody knows how anything happens. Eric Holder never knows how anything happens in the world. Uh, the IRS, these people don't know how anything happened. There was rogue elements. It's all lies. Uh, conservative group waiting three years for approval. This is from the National Review. Um, Houston-based nonprofit dedicated to fighting voter fraud has filed federal uh, papers against the IRS seeking its 
to grant its tax-exempt status three years after applying and seeking damages for unlawful actions taken by the IRS against the organization. Excellent. That's great. Fuck the IRS. Um, top Democrats blame scandal on the tax code. Well, why don't you just abolish the IRS? We don't need it. We didn't have it. It's a private corporation. This is from the New York Times. Oh, my God. Controlled opposition. Um... Let's see. Parties divide over fallouts. This is actually just control. This is just a, 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 a Washington Times uh, control paper. Democratic lawmakers on the Senate's Finance Committee said Tuesday the IRS, while engaging in unacceptable targeting of conservative groups, may have been set up for failure by campaign finance law ambiguities that allow tax-exempt groups to engage in partisan politics without disclosing their donors. They are just trying to dodge and weave their way out of this. It is just bullshit. Top IRS official to take the fifth. Let's hear this. That's unbelievable. This is from the Mail Online. Top IRS official will invoke the Fifth Amendment in congressional hearing about Tea Party targeting program. The Los Angeles Times reported Tuesday afternoon that Lo uh, Lois Lerner, who heads up the Internal Revenue's tax-exempt division, plans to invoke the Fifth Amendment to the U.S. Constitution in a hearing Wednesday before the House Committee on Oversight and Governmental Affairs. Now, again, this isn't even the government. Remember, the IRS is a private corporation, like the Federal Reserve. It was granted power by Congress to legally print money and legally collect the, the revenue and the taxes. It's all a fraud, though. The money goes to these criminal bankers who are bringing in this leftist agenda, and they call me, who wants to restore our constitutional republic. What happened to you people out there? I mean, really, what happened to everybody? How can you not remember that that our our country was based on our, our rights were given to us by God, and they wanted to make God absent from the world? Our rights are inalienable rights given to us by God, and they wanted, they wanted the government to give us rights. What we fought for in England is happening to us here again. Our inalienable rights given to us by God, the right to, to free speech, the right to freedom of religion, the right to bear arms, the right to, to not have to quarter soldiers. These rights are inalienable, and the only ones anyone seems to know it's unbelievable, is like the fifth and the first, and then the second because it's so much in the media. But these are our binding documents. This is what makes us America. This is why we have not been taken over by tyrants. But they are. They're insidiously taking us over through an, through an, uh, an agenda that I described many times and gave other people's examples. Uh, G. Edward Griffin read it. Uh, read the book, Tragedy and Hope. The pages are listed in my video. Uh, it, it's just, it's videos, it's there. The, the, the truth is there. This is their agenda to slowly, the, the entire theory of the Rhodesians, as, as G. Edward Griffin coins them, the Rhodes, the Rhodesians, their agenda is to, uh, control, They want to destroy the Constitution, the, the, the Bill of Rights, our freedoms, and they're taxing us to death. It's, it's worse. It's worse than what, what we revolted against when we supposedly gained independence from England. The bankers have been enslaving us and fighting us. The bankers are our enemies. They are the enemies. They create money out of, made out of nothing and make debt on that excuse me, make interest on that debt that we pay income tax for. That doesn't do anything to help us. It's the most corrupt political system known to man. Yet we are flourishing countries, so it's great. Oh yeah, we're not flourishing because they're widening the gap. So more and more people are going to be poor. So it's going to be truly like a pyramid. People at the top have all the money and the Masses at the bottom have nothing. There, there will be no middle. It'll be a pyramid with missing the middle. Pure serfdom. And let me tell you, we're only one generation away from tyranny and despotism. Our founding fathers, here in this country, brought about the only true revolution that has ever taken place in man's history.
Every other revolution simply exchanged one set of rulers for another set of rulers. But only here did that little band of men so advance beyond their time that the world has never seen their like since evolve the idea that you and I have within ourselves the God-given right and the ability to determine our own destiny. But freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it on to our children in the bloodstream. The only way they can inherit the freedom we have known is if we fight for it, protect it, defend it, and then hand it to them with the well-taught lessons of how they in their lifetime must do the same. And if you and I don't do this, then you and I may well spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it once was like in America when men were free. Thank you. So here we are with the IRS workers used to government credit card for years. <laughs> IRS worker used federal plastic for Amazon buys for years. Wonderful. This is what our tax dollars are going for, our private corporation uh, profiting and their employees pilfering. Wonderful. Welcome to the New World Order. But that is just unreal. I mean, this was really creepy, the exorcist thing. This was, did, this is, this is bizarre. I don't even know what to make of that. Uh, unbelievable. But if you go to a flashback, uh, in 1975, outbreaks blamed on global cooling. This is something you can't make up. You see, just the way the globalists try to profit and, and manipulate us to buy and spend money and, and, and tax us on things to keep us safe and, and everything else. The 75 tornado outbreaks was blamed on global cooling. And that was only in 1975. So, I mean, you know, you have to understand how these news organizations are controlled. Here, I have a couple of uh, really good examples of this from well-learned well researchers who have spent their years and their lives dedicated to exposing the truth that is occulted by the controlled mainstream media. But... Um <clears throat> they have conducted studies now, according to this economist story, that the um, aluminum atom is remarkably similar in its chemical composition and its uh, electrical charge to iron. And of course the body needs iron, the body has to have iron for red blood cells and so forth. And so the cells of the body are receptive to picking up iron. Well, then you ingest aluminum, which has almost the same molecular structure in which the cells uh, take up and mistake for iron. So the reason that uh, aluminum is having this destructive influence on our system is that the cells take it up as iron, thinking it's something they can use, and it's a poison. Because aluminum does poison uh, the system. It has a deleterious effect on the cells. And so not only do you have Alzheimer's, but you have many other uh, organic ailments which stem from the fact that uh, aluminum is incorporated into the system. And that's the first time I'd ever seen any indication of such a study, and this is an authoritative scientific study, and it is in the current issue of The Economist. So these are the sort of things that you pick up. Uh, it's like prospecting for gold. You have to keep digging all the time, and you can go through a big pile of material, and you may come up with one or two little things like that. <clears throat> 